Ko halalium la Yahweh b'Hashem Yahweh Shai b'Hashem Harakakudash, giving double honors to, to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone who taught, taught us His truth, and to all you uh, brothers in faith halakium throughout the four winds, continue pushing and using uh, sincere women that do listen to these videos or watch these videos. Um, you know, shalom or barakatham to, to all the brothers and, and, and sisters. You know, they're, they're watching, tune into these videos as well. And um, bless your household. Let me get into a video dealing with uh, concubines and spoils of war. That's what I might name it. Spoils, concubines are spoils of war. Or whatever I'll name it. But low willingness to be an edifying video. I'm just going to get into um, what spoils of war are. And proving that concubines are a spoil of war. So the first scripture I want to grab is Deuteronomy chapter 21 and verse 10. There's Deuteronomy chapter 21 and verse 10. When thou goest forth to war. See, this is a law that the Israelites receive by the hands of Moses. Which is really the Heavenly Father's laws, which is our laws. So when we go forth to war, right? The Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians. Deuteronomy chapter 21 and verse 10 when thou goes forth to war against thine enemies enemies representing representing these other nations non-israelites and the Lord thy power hath delivered them into thine hands and thou hast taken them captive and the Lord thy power Yahweh Yahweh Shai hath delivered them into thine hands and thou hast taken them captive and seest among the captives a beautiful woman and has they desire unto her. So if we go to war and we conquer that particular nation, that non-Israelite nation, that we would, uh, uh, if we see a beautiful woman, right, of one of these captives of these other nations, that thou wouldest have her to thy wife. And has they desire unto her, that thou wouldest have her to thy wife. Right, so if you see a beautiful woman or one of these captive women, that we could take this woman and make her, her uh, our wife or my wife. Because what consecrates sex? Marriage. As it is written in um, Genesis, I'll grab it right quick. Genesis chapter 27 and verse 67. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah. And she became his wife, and she loved her, and she, and he loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his after his mother's death. So Isaac popped Rebecca, and that's what consecrated marriage was sex. Sex means to cut through. That's what sex means. It means to cut through. So Isaac cut through Rebecca. That's simply what it is. Not no wedding rings, not no um. Uh, would you take this woman to be your lawfully? None of that. No bowing down to a woman and putting a ring on her while you looking up while she's standing over you. None of that. But sex. That's what consecrates marriage. So Deuteronomy chapter 21 and verse 10 again. When thou goest forth to war against thine enemies, non-Israelites, and the Lord Yahweh Yahweh Shai hath delivered them into thine hands, and thou hast taken them captive, and seest among the captives a beautiful woman, and hast a desire unto her, that thou wouldest have her to thy wife. Then thou shalt bring her home to thine house, and she shall save her head and pair her nails okay meaning she's um in a uh because what 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 is a woman's glory her hair right so she says save her hair meaning she's in a, in a position of mourning and pair her nails and she's to put the raiment of her captivity from off her and shall remain in thine house and bewail her father and her mother a full month so that was even uh the sense of humor that the lord has a compassion that he even allowed look man all right you got as you're gonna pop her this is gonna be your wife your concubine you know you still gotta let her mourn for her for her father and mother that were killed or whatever they were killed in a, in, a, in in um in um in a war and bewail her, her father and mother a full month and after that thou shalt go in unto her and be her husband and she shall be thy wife so this is what you call spoils of war having a concubine right spoils of war and let me read this right here as well verse 14 and it shall be if thou have no delight in her so if you don't find no delight in her okay 
no more or whatever, then thou shalt let her go with whither she will. But thou shalt not sell her at all for money. And that's the thing what Esau did with our people. He raped the Israelite woman down south, up here in the north, over there in the west, in California, in the Midwest, and overseas, Portugal, Spain, you name it, any, all over the world, right? He raped our women. He made them prostitutes. He never let them go. He just kept on abusing and abusing. Them. That's, that's why the scriptures say in the curses that our women should be harlots in the streets. So most of our women are, 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 are harlots. They're whores. They're prostitutes or they're whores. And it says here, thou shalt not make merchandise of her. Right? Esau Edom made merchandise of our women. You know, w w w auction and blocks are selling her. Like they, like he could have fucked the uh, Israelite woman, right, or or, or the 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 so-called Negro woman or the Israelite woman, the so-called black woman. He could have fucked her, right? He fucked her, then he sold her off to another um, plantation owner that fucked her too. So he's passing her around like like a filthy rag. And that's what these devils did. But we ain't we ain't do that as Israelites. We ain't do that because that's not our customs to go sell our women. To be harlots that's not our customs now of course you had wicked israelites that did that yes we understand that but for those that understood we we wouldn't uh prostitute our daughters like the scriptures say not to uh to do that to our women or to sell them off and it says here fame um verse 14 and it shall be if thou have no delight in her then thou shall let her go with whither she will but thou shall not sell her at all for money Thou shalt not make merchandise of her because thou hast humbled her. You see that? So we will take the concubine of another nation. Because you're going to have concubines. Brothers going to have plenty of concubi concubines in the kingdom. Whether it's Elamites, whether it's Esau, Edom, the Edomite women. Whether it's the um, uh, Moabite women, the Ammonite women, the, 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 um, the um, did I say Hamite women? The Hamite women. The Japhite woman, all these women of these other nations, whatever nation that includes, we're going to make them our concubine. But we're also going to have Israelite women wives. We're going to have multiple uh, wives, which we could do that. Because Solomon had, what, 700 wives and 300 concubines. So we can do that. We could do that with these women. We can have um, um, a multiple uh, uh, concubine of women, and we could also have multiple wives. So we, we wouldn't sell our Israelite women for money like Esau Edom did down south. Okay. Um, spoilers of war. Hold on. There's another one too. The cattle. Cattle. And. Oh man. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Could be Deuteronomy as well. Here we go. This is Deuteronomy chapter 20 and verse 14, I believe. Make no peace with thee, but will make war against thee, then shall thou besiege it. It's just going to. Uh, Right. Let me start over here. Deuteronomy chapter 20 and verse 4. For the Lord, Yahweh, Yahweh, Shai, your powers, is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. Just jump to verse um, 13. And when the Lord thy God hath delivered it into thine hands, thou shalt smite every male thereof with the edge of the sword. But the women and the little ones and the cattle and all that is in the city, even all, all the spoil... Thereof, right, spoils of war. Women are a spoil of war. Shall thou take unto thyself, and thou shalt eat the spoil of thine enemies, which the Lord thy power hath given thee. Thou shalt do that, thus shalt thou do unto all the cities, thus shalt thou do unto all the cities which are very far off from thee, which are not of the cities of these nations. But of the cities of these people which the Lord thy power have get, doth give thee for inheritance, thou shalt save alive nothing that breatheth. Let me see, make a war against it, destroy it, may see. Hold on.
Okay, verse 14 again. But the women and the little ones and the cattle and all that is in the city, even all, even all the spoil thereof, shall thou take unto thyself, and thou shalt eat the spoil of thine enemies, which the Lord thy power, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, hath given thee. You see that? So women are spoils of war and whatever else comes with it because the Romans did that too. You don't think when the Romans took over the Greeks, you don't think they took uh, uh, other Edomite women for their possession? Or when the Romans um, were besieging Jerusalem, you don't think they took women? You don't think they took uh, Israelite women as, as their spoils of war? Or whatever the case may be. But any, any nation that takes down another nation, you... Um, you can do that. You can take the women of these other nations to be your concubines. Concubine means to lie with. Cubine, uh, lie with, or, or with, to lie down or, and con with, or to lie with. Esau, Edom took spoils of war. Down south, when he was raping the women, he took spoils of war. Matter of fact, let's go into the curses, right? That's why you got a lot of these tears. The Esau Edom, the so-called white man, was fucking a lot of these Israelite women. What? And that seed will be what? His. Just because he might come out dark skin don't mean shit. He might have had nappy or woolly hair. That don't mean shit. He's still an Edomite by blood. So just imagine that that child that came out dark skin by um by that Edomite man or came out of that Israelite woman and generations, then he popped the uh, male popped the, another dark skinned Israelite woman. Then it'll start looking dark again, just like two generations or three. That's how quick, you know, and you start believing he's an Israelite because he puts on the appearance or the um, the characteristics of a Hebrew Israelite. But little do you know, he's a uh, the angels are looking at this damn demon like he's a uh, he's an Edomite. Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight and. Um, Start at verse. This we, if we were to keep the laws, everything would have been all right with us. But if we were not to keep the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father and Yahweh Shai, then everything would go wrong with us. And that's exactly what happened with the Israelites. That's why today we're still in these ghettos, in these barrios, in these reservations. That's why today we're looked upon and um, as as um, pitiful, like we're looked upon as as um, as as you know animals, savages. Beasts. Oh man. See, so I still like it. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 30. Thou shalt betroth a wife. Right? And another man shall lie with her. Did not the so-called white man Esau eat him? Lie with, with um, the Israelite man's wife? Or even if she was promised to you already? Or whatever the case may be, he still fucked it in front of you. He fucked the Israelite woman right in front of you. And he tells you that in his um, programs. He tells you that on YouTube. That he fucked the Israelite woman in front of you. And you couldn't have no power or might to do anything about it. So thou shalt betroth a wife. What does it mean to betroth? To engage or, or espouse matrimony, okay? Or to betroth. And th thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build an house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, right? We built the White House. We built the um this um city hall. Um, oh man, what they call it? Capitol Hill. We built America. We built Babylon the Great. Just like we built what? E Egypt back then with Ramses, the, um, underneath Ramses the second. You can find that written in Exodus chapter one. We that was Ramses the second that had us in bondage at that time. We built ancient Egypt. We built America. We built Brazil. Look at coffee. Look at um the West Indies with the sugarcane plantations. We built all this tobacco plantations. We built this whole entire world. We made the economy. We created the economy. Verse 30, thou shalt betroth a wife and another man shall lie with her. 
Thou shalt, matter of fact, let's look at the uh, commentary on this. I want to see something. Text commentaries. Oh, my bad. Hold on. Uh, hold on. Let's, let's do it from here. I'm used to doing it from here. Um, Deuteronomy 28 and 30. I want to see what they say. Let's see what Esau Edom has to say about this. And I'm going to read it. Okay, let's see. Cambridge. Let's see what Gills. Okay. Um the sons and daughters will be carried away into captivity before the eyes of the people who would see it in the pine and pine after the children with sorrow and longing after them. Let's press. Let me just see something before I get into that commissary. Don't leave not knowing from court. Blah, blah, blah. No running through your signal. The spoilation of them should be utter almost dear and precious to them should be the prey of their enemies. Wife, house, vineyard, herd, and flock should be ruthlessly taken away from them. Sons and daughters should be carried away, carried into captivity, and their eyes should look for them in rain and with constant and wasting longing true. Complete troubles bereaved. All right, let's read uh, Gill's ex exposition of the entire Bible. This devil goes off, but you know, we get we get the information on this. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 30. This right here is uh, correct on. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man, meaning she's already promised to you, and another man shall lie with her, right? She's already promised to you, you got another man lying with her. That pretty much what? You saw Edom fuck your woman right in front of you. She's already promised to you, and, and guess what? She's, before you get, you know, um, what well, she's already uh, got fucked by the slave owner by the slave master and another man shall lie with her espouse a woman in order to make her his wife and before he can take her home and consummate the marriage through some calamity or another coming upon them they should be set at a distance from each other and that's what this damn devil did he separated the family or the household and she should fall into the hands of another man who either should ravish her, that's what Esau Edom did, Rav lied with our women, or gain her consent to lie with her, nah, or become, he pretty much raped her, took her by force, right? Or become his wife, when which when the marriage was so near being con consummated, must be a grievous disappointment and a great vexation. And that's what this devil did, he ravished our Israelite women. You see that? He ravished our Israelite women and that's where you get Salak. You no, know, so a concubine is a spoil of war. And that's the point I wanted to prove in this video that a concubine is a spoil of war. Alright, con means with cubine to lie. To lie. So you're to lie with. Basically, that's what it means. Simple as that. To lie with. So these other nation women are gonna be our uh concubines in the kingdom but how Esau Edom did it in this society he did it by by fucking great hate that perpetual continual stroke raping a woman buck breaking the fucking a man we ain't gonna do that in the kingdom none of that shit man fucking um um they women in front of them nah none of that none of that you know we got dignity man we got integrity man we not these Edomites man we don't do that man our people just fell underneath a bad condition. And that's why we're in this condition of hell right now. But with that, giving our praises, glory, and honor to you. How about Shemi? How about Shai? How about Shemi? How about Shai? And Shalom. And of course, there's much more you could get into. 
dealing with being betrothed and the Levi, you know, and the priest, you know, you can get into so much, but I just wanted to prove the point with the concubines. Anyway, shalom.